firstly, thank you to Ert for introducing me to mechanical keyboards and for buying my first mechanical keyboard. Alright 200 IQ gamers, in this video I'm going to show you how I modded a mechanical keyboard from sounding like this in its stock form, to sounding like this. That's right, I put Animal Crossing keycaps on my keyboard because I'm a gangster. Don't mess with me, I'm crazy. Ugh! Or alternatively, I'm a nerdy dad who loves Animal Crossing as much as my wife does. But first, let's venture into the murky underbelly of mechanical keyboard enthusiasts. There is an actuation point, there's a clack. Now obviously, the volume level goes up. People that are nearby in your environment may get irritated. But as we all know, if you're the type of person who's into mechanical keyboards, there's no one that wants to be near you anyways. It's true. Over the last few years, a growing number of enthusiasts have been investing ever-increasing amounts of their time and money, spending hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars turning their keyboards into tangible works of art. From the form factor of the base to the PCB, plates, stabilizers, switches and keycaps, each individual component combines to express each user's individuality, creating a unique keyboard not only in terms of the way it looks, but in how it sounds and feels as well. Then there are also stunning artisan novelty keycaps to consider with incredibly intricate details. For many, this hobby has become a rabbit hole abyss of obsession from which there is no escape, and I too have fallen hard and fast after a friend introduced me to the phenomenon. Since then, my recommendations have been overtaken with videos titled, Yes, but does your spacebar sound this good? <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that I began this journey with an open mind but skeptical about the importance of the role that keyboards play in our computer setup. After all, aren't these enthusiasts just over-engineering what is a relatively simple piece of technology that hasn't changed much since the 1980s? So why is there a growing group of people who are so passionate about mechanical keyboards when even the most prolific content creators in the community will admit when asked if a mechanical keyboard types better than a cheaper keyboard? No, not really. A cheap membrane keyboard can still do most of what a mechanical keyboard can. And from purely a functional standpoint, both will serve its purpose well of inputting characters and not much more. In an effort to understand this craze more, I delved into the deepest, darkest recesses of the internet to uncover the denizens of these weird creeps who like to spend an inordinate amount of time alone in their basements, looping switches. But what I found quickly surprised me. People assume that the mechanical keyboard community are unapproachable and elitist about their hobby, but I think that reputation is completely unfounded. If you go to the mechanical keyboard subreddit, it's mostly people celebrating all of the contributions from newbies to veterans and just having fun with it. The most popular posts come from people doing something completely unique, like this person adding keyboard switches to his microwave, or this guy making a mechanical keyboard business card that also plays Tetris. Kind of pointless and impractical? Maybe. But fun? Absolutely. A good chunk of the rest of the popular posts on the subreddit are the community self-deprecatingly poking fun at themselves. Mechanical keyboards can seem like a confusing hobby for beginners, especially when the most popular content creators hold opposing views on what the best switches are. Now I'm a proud member of Linear Gang. Don't get me wrong, I'm still very much Tactile Gang wires up. Everyone new to the hobby wants to know what the best possible components are so they can build themselves the ultimate keyboard, and are left perplexed and deflated when they're immediately told it's all personal preference really. Well what does that mean? Surely there's a best form factor, a best switch, the best keycaps? Well no, and that's exactly the point. You see, there's an infinite combination of components that create a keyboard, and while there is some standardization, it's entirely possible to create a keyboard that is completely unique to yourself, especially with the advent of 3D printing, allowing people to literally design and build their own personal devices from the ground up. When you get to the stage of dactyl manuform keyboards, you have these amazing enthusiasts using 3D modeling programs to design their own custom ergonomic keyboards. Then 3D printing, hand wiring, soldering, and using software to designate the functions of each key. You see, one person's ideal keyboard might feature a 60% layout with tactile switches and SA profile keycaps, while another person's ideal keyboard might be whatever this ungodly concoction is. I began engrossing myself in keyboard enthusiast videos on YouTube and while I enjoyed watching these people building their intricate keyboards, I still couldn't really appreciate it. I needed to experience it for myself, so I bought an entry-level mechanical hot swap keyboard along with all the kit I needed to mod it. 
Once everything arrived, I spent an afternoon taking it apart, wholly modding the new Duroc plate mounted stabilizers because my PCB doesn't support screwing ones, and lubing the gator on black switches before putting it all back together. I cannot express enough how skeptical I remained throughout this whole process. Out of the box, the keyboard I bought was loud, unexceptional to type on with scratchy switches, and I genuinely didn't believe that modding it would make that much of a difference to the sound or feel. However, once I was done, the difference was truly like night and day. I had no idea lubing your switches could be this life-changing, genuinely. Afterwards, typing on it was like tapping on pillows made of angel feathers. I finally understood what all the fuss was about and why keyboard enthusiasts love their keyboards so much. Because once you've experienced this, you want everyone else to experience it too. I asked my wife to give it a try and despite the fact that you could audibly hear her eyes roll, she begrudgingly agreed before apathetically slumping into my office chair. After a few seconds, she sat bolt upright and said, holy crap, this actually feels amazing. The next day she accidentally spilled coffee all over her membrane keyboard and asked me to mod a mechanical keyboard for her as well. The more you look into this hobby, the more it makes perfect sense. The keyboard is the tactile gateway that connects us to the rest of humanity through our computers. It is the physical totem that allows us to translate our thoughts into digital information and communicate with everyone else in the world. But is it really worth spending hundreds or potentially thousands of dollars on it? Well, that's entirely up to you, and that's the point. A professional musician will spend thousands on the perfect instrument that they love playing music with. With so many of us spending both our working and leisure time at our computers, why wouldn't we want to purchase the best equipment to make the whole experience a more enjoyable endeavor? And while we regularly replace most of our technology due to obsolescence, a great keyboard could potentially be with you for a lifetime. One of the most popular mechanical keyboard videos on YouTube is Teha Types, aka Nathan Kim's video titled The Making of Tfue's $3,500 Custom Luxury Mechanical Keyboard. So what is so special about this keyboard and is it really worth $3,500? Well, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble here, but when it comes to this level of custom mechanical keyboards, the price is completely arbitrary and comes down to whatever price KeyCult and Nathan Kim decide to place on it. Technically speaking, the KeyCult V1 cost $480 in its first group buy, which included the base, PCB, and plate. Add the Novel Keys Cream switches for $45 and the JMK Striker keycap set for $200, and you have a keyboard that's worth roughly $725. So let's add on $300 for the custom anodized finish they added to the base, which will bring the total price of the keyboard to roughly $1,000. Now, I could be missing something here, like maybe he's using switch lubricant infused with angel's tears or something, but it could seem like either Nathan is simply slapping on an arbitrary fee of $2,500 for the time he spent building the keyboard, or perhaps the guys at KeyCult charged more for a one-off commission. But here's the trouble with that statement. These products are art, and like art, their value comes down to whatever people are willing to pay for them. After all, it's not like you can go out and get a KeyCult V1 and the rest of the components right now and build your own version of the Tfue keyboard. In reality, getting involved in a group buy for a keyboard as special as a KeyCult could take up to a year from the moment you put down your cold hard cash to the point that you receive the keyboard itself. So what's the point in me telling you all this? Am I trying to expose Teha types? Not in the slightest. I actually think Nathan Kim is an awesome ambassador for mechanical keyboards. He creates brilliant content, and I've no doubt the work he does building these keyboards is impeccable, and is likely worth it for those who can afford it. The point I'm trying to make is that the Tfue $3,500 video is one of the most popular videos about mechanical keyboards on YouTube, likely in part because of the huge $3,500 price tag in the title. So that is the figure many people will have in their heads as the price for an endgame mechanical keyboard. However, the reality is that for even the most vehement mechanical keyboard enthusiasts, an endgame keyboard would more likely cost anything from $500 to $1000, especially if you're building it yourself. The only problem with getting into a group buy is that you must put down your money up front and then could be waiting anything from 3 months to a year or more before you actually receive the product. If you decide not to get into a group buy, then the aftermarket prices for a keyboard that might initially cost $500 could easily increase to $2,000 and beyond due to its rarity and the convenience of not having to wait for the group buy to finish manufacturing and shipping of the keyboard. The point here is to understand where your money is going in this hobby, because after a certain point, you'll experience diminishing returns in terms of quality, and what you're really paying for instead is the exclusivity of owning a very rare keyboard. 
So how do we get into group buys so that we're not stuck paying four times the price in the aftermarket? Well, I'm glad you asked there, friend. And there's a website called mechgroupbuys.com, which constantly lists all of the currently active mechanical keyboard group buys. And they have a very friendly Discord server too, if you have any questions. At the end of all this, I've had a lot of fun on my journey. And honestly, I think the mechanical keyboards community is one of the coolest groups on the internet. They're an extremely likable bunch who are just having fun with their hobby, with a lot of self-awareness and humor. And whether you're just starting your journey with a simple hot swap keyboard like I did, or going all out and buying a full kit to solder together, building a keyboard is a great experience and one I definitely recommend. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Catch you all next time.